And if I had time, I would turn to Romans, the seventh chapter, and I would read the whole chapter to you because Paul said, when I would do good, evil was present with me. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, I'm doing what I don't want to do. He said, my flesh is lusting against the spirit, the will of God, and, and the will of God is, is against the flesh, but I keep giving in to my flesh. He, he said, I find myself subject to a law that is in me. He said, there's a law in me warring against the law of my mind. In other words, I know what to do right because my mama taught me how to do right. My granddaddy, before my granddaddy died on his sick bed, he told me that I need to do right. I was trained and raised in Sunday school. I was raised in a church. And in my mind, I know that law that is good. But in my flesh, I find myself giving in to the sinful impulses and desires of the flesh. That's the law of sin and death. That's in Romans, the seventh chapter. That's in Galatians 5 and 8 and 17. That's why he said you cannot do the things that you would. But in verse 18, he said, but if ye be led of the spirit, mm -hmm, you are not under that law. The law that you are under is Romans, the eighth chapter. Mm -hmm. He said, there is thou for no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. If you're in Christ Jesus, you're not walking after the flesh but you're walking after the spirit. I can't hear nobody. So if you look at Ephesians 5 and 18, because it's so important that you walk in the spirit, because if you don't walk in the spirit, you're going to end up walking in the flesh. And those of you that are currently walking in the flesh, you need to walk in the spirit. Ephesians 5 and 18, it tells us, he says, and be not drunk with wine. That's walking in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Saints don't get drunk. Y'all don't have to say nothing. Well, I go to church, I shout and dance and drink. That don't mean you saved because you do all that. He said, don't be drunk with wine, whether it is excess or easy access. Mm -hmm. But he said, be filled. In other words, be full of the spirit of God. So what does it mean to be full of the spirit? I, I want to teach this. It's so important. I want to teach this. What does it mean to be full of the spirit? It's not saying be super duper deep. Mm -hmm. Being full of the spirit is not saying you walk around speaking in tongues and prophesying all the time. It's not saying that, uh, you know, because, you know, I find out that some people that act like they're really, really deep, they're really not that deep. Mm -hmm. uh, some people, they're deep in error. They go off. You know, people go off in church. I got three people to say amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, some people, they so deep in it and they so mystical. They so spiritual. But if you look into their life, you will see that they're not even living holy. How you that deep? You can prophesy. Come on now. You can speak in tongues. You can lay hands on people. You can witness to people. You can do all that stuff. But you have a problem living holy. Something is wrong. You're not that deep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, somebody, some people, they, oh, my God, you can't have a, a, a normal conversation. Mm -hmm. You can't talk about what's going on in the news. You can't talk about what's going on in basketball. You can't talk about Monday night football. You can't talk about what's going on in politics, whether Obama is going. You can't have those conversations because they're going to go off in a trance and they're going to start speaking in tongues. They're going to start prophesying and doing all that other stuff. You don't even want to go over their house because, you know, eventually they're going to lay hands on you and have some, a word to say. And you have a problem because they gave you a word last week and it still didn't come to pass. And that word last month still didn't come to pass. And you're still waiting for that word last year to come to pass. All right. So being is not talking about being deep. So what does it mean uh, to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Somebody say, what is he talking about? What does it mean to be filled uh, with the Spirit? I'm so glad you asked because I can answer your question. The answer to your question is in Galatians 5 and 22 and 23. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is being filled with the Spirit is being full of love. Y'all not saying nothing. Is that deep and mystical? See, when you're full of the Spirit, you're full of love, so you can love your enemies. Mm -hmm. You're full of it. Look at somebody say, you're full of it. Being full of the Spirit means uh, that you're full of joy. Mm -hmm. That's why some people walk around, some saints walk around depressed, they walk around sad, because you know what? They're not full of the Holy Ghost. It's impossible to be full of the Holy Ghost and have a frown on your face. So be, being full of joy means uh, having fun. You know joy is fun. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So it means having fun in the Holy Ghost. Do you know I come to church to have fun in the Holy Ghost? What? Yes, sir. I look forward to coming to church because I like having fun in the Holy Ghost. Praising God, shouting and dancing and giving God glory and, and hearing the songs of praise and, and looking at the saints giving God. Oh, I have so much fun when I come to the house of the Lord. Now, you know, those of you that are so deep that you don't like to have fun, uh, you don't need to go to heaven. You need to go to hell. I'm going to preach whether you say amen or not. I said, those of you that don't like to have fun, uh, you don't need to go to heaven. You need to go to hell because guess what they doing in heaven? They're having a lot of fun in heaven. So if you don't like to have fun, you don't want to go to heaven, but you need to go to hell because there's no fun in hell. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Amanda. Those of you that don't like to smile, you act like it's go it'll hurt you if you smile. You act like if you just smile, your face will crack and fall off. Those of you that you have a hard time smiling, you don't need to go to heaven. You need to go to hell. You don't want, if you don't like to smile, because when we go to heaven, guess what? Everybody going to be smiling in heaven. Oh, but in hell, nobody will be smiling. I can guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. Those of you, you don't like to give God praise. Mm -hmm. You have a problem giving the Lord praise. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to give you, I just want to tell you something. You really don't want to go up there. If you don't like giving God praise, you don't want to go to heaven. Where you really want to go is hell. Mm -hmm. Because if you go up there, all they doing all day, 24-7, they shouting, they dancing, they, like some of us was doing this morning, they running around. You only see two or three people running around. Can you imagine millions of people running around and shouting and praising God in heaven? If you don't like praising God, you don't want to go to heaven. You want to go to hell. Because mm -hmm. I can guarantee you, uh, nobody is giving God praise in hell. Mm -hmm. so, so, so what it means is uh, when you're full of the Holy Ghost somebody say you are full of joy mm -hmm. you're full of peace you're, you're full of long suffering that's why you need to be full of the Holy Ghost so that you can go through some of y'all you're going through some long suffering your trial it's not, it's not a, a quick trial meaning it's not going to be over tomorrow mm -hmm. you're going through a long test anybody going through some long tests and trial and you need to be full of the Holy Ghost because when you're full of the Holy Ghost, you're full of, somebody say, long suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, being full of the Holy Spirit, you're full of goodness. When you're full of the Holy Spirit, your attitude is nice and sweet. You ever seen some saints act mean? Don't look at nobody. Please. Please don't look at nobody. Come on. That's because they're not full of the Holy Ghost. If you feel the Holy Ghost, oh, you just, oh, you, you just goodness. And oh, you ever been so happy, you just start giving people stuff, you know. Y'all ain't been there before. Oh, I've been so full. Uh, you want some money? I'll give you some money. Oh, when you feel the Holy Ghost, you just want to give. You need a ride home. See, some of y'all, you don't want to get nobody a ride home because you're not full of the Holy Ghost. Y'all not saying nothing to me. Oh, you, you run out the door before Mother Boogaloo. Come on now. <laughs> But if you're full of the Holy Ghost, you, you'll walk up. You need a rad daughter. Come on now. Because somebody said you're full of goodness. When you're full of the Holy Spirit, you are full of faith. Look at Galatians, Galatians 5 and 16. He said, this I say then, I want you to understand this. Walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5 and 25 says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So how do you walk in the spirit? Y'all must not know because y'all quiet. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, 22 and 23. Walking in the spirit is walking in love. 
Walking in the spirit is walking in joy, walking in peace, uh, walking in long suffering, walking in gentleness, walking in goodness. Uh, that's why David says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life because I'm walking in the spirit. And if you're walking in the spirit, goodness and mercy, that's why he said all things work together for good uh, to them that love God. Because if you love God uh, and you're walking in the spirit, even though bad will come, good will eventually come out of it. Somebody say, you need to walk in the spirit. Look at Ephesians 5 and 2. He said, walk in love. That's just one to let you understand that walking in the spirit is talking about walking in the fruit of the spirit. Walk in love as Christ had loved the church. But he said, fornication, uncleanness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor adjusting. Be full of the Holy Ghost. I want you to notice something in Ephesians chapter 5. Notice before he said, before he said, if you read Ephesians 5 and 6, all of it, before he said, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands, and before he said, husbands, love your wives, before he said that, he said, be full of the Holy Ghost. I want you to notice before the Bible says, children, obey your parents in Ephesians chapter 6, before he said that, he says, be full of the Holy Ghost. Before he says, parents don't provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up into the nurturing and admonition of the Lord. Before he said that, he said, be full of the Holy Ghost. Before he said, be obedient to your boss. And even before he tells you to stand in Ephesians 6 and 10, before he tells you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, before he tells you to put on the whole arm of God that she may be able to stand against the walls of the devil, before he says that, he tells you to be full of the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout out, Why? I said, shout out, why? Thank you so much. Thank you for helping me. Because in order to be the husband that you need to be, in order to be the wife that you need to be, you need to be full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the Holy Ghost will make you a good wife even if you have a bad husband. The Holy Ghost will make you a good husband even if you have a bad wife. That's why some of the old saints were able to deal with their knucklehead husbands. You know why? Because they stay full of the Holy Ghost. If they wasn't full of the Holy Ghost, why that knucklehead would sleep on the couch because he always go to sleep watching TV, she will boil some hot oil. Mm -hmm. it, look in the news, it happens. She'll get some hot oil and make sure it's hot till it's popping hot and she'll pour it all over his face. The way some of these husbands treat their wives, you know you would do it too the way your husband treats you. But they stay full of the Holy Ghost. And they was able to make it through because they was full of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it'll, it'll make you, uh, it, if you want to be a good parent, then you need to be full of the Holy Ghost. If you want to be a good employee, uh, you will be full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, because if you're full of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will tell you you need to stop coming in so late. Come on now, the Holy Ghost will teach you some common sense. That's why I love the Holy Ghost. You do more than shout. Having the Holy Ghost is more than shouting and dancing and speaking tongues. He'll teach you how to carry yourself. The Holy Ghost tells you how to act. And when you acting up, the Holy Ghost will put you in check. Oh, if you was full of the Holy Ghost, he said, now you know. The boss don't have to write you up. Come on, you don't have to get your third one and then get fired. Oh, the Holy Ghost will write you up. Now listen, you was just in church on Sunday. You was just shouting and dancing and speaking in tongues on Sunday. Now you coming late to work and you got an attitude. You need to repent right now. Don't ask me for nothing else. That's how the Holy Ghost talk. I'm, t I'm talking about, the, see, people don't know what the real Holy Ghost is. The church world has confused people to think that the Holy Ghost is just shouting and dancing and speaking in tongues. They've seen so many people speaking in tongues and cursing. They've seen so many people speaking in tongues and acting like the devil. Now I got to sit here and teach you what the real Holy Ghost is. The real Holy Ghost will teach you how to treat people right. And, and he said, oh, if your brother has an art against you and you got a confrontation, don't lay hands on nobody. Don't you prophesy. He, don't you do that. Don't shout and dance over them. If you got an art against your brother and sister, he said, leave that mess on the altar. Leave your gift on the altar. And before you do all that stuff, be reconciled to your brother. Because all that stuff don't mean nothing. That's what the, somebody said. That's, what, that's the real Holy Ghost. 
Mm -hmm. He'll lead you and he'll guide you in all truth. He'll lead you at your attitude. He'll guide your attitude. He'll tell you you got a big mouth and you need to shut up. He'll tell you you need to submit to the pastor. I know he's younger than you, but he's still your pastor, so you need to be quiet and listen to you. He'll tell you, listen to the mother. She know what she's talking about. She about 30 years older than you, you knucklehead. If she tell you your dress is too short, then you need to pull it down. Somebody say, the real Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. See, I need you to understand that there are some situations in life. In order to deal with, uh, you have to be full of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. There are some people in your life, uh, in order for you to deal with them, uh, you need to be full of Holy Ghost. If you're not full of Holy Ghost, they, they have a, 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 an ability. A, a gift. They have, a, they have an ability of tapping into that anger. They don't even have to say much. You had a, you had a, you know that song, Old Happy Day. You was having an old happy day until they called. You was having an old happy day until you saw them in church. You was having an old happy day until they came over. And then all of a sudden, all these crazy feelings, these feelings of anger, and then you just find yourself, oh, I'm telling you, some people that you're dealing with, in order to deal with them, you need to be full of the Holy Ghost. Or you will find yourself walking in the spirit, I mean in the flesh. Let me get that right. If you're not full of the Holy Ghost, you will find yourself walking in the flesh. And some of y'all, you know you can go there. My God, my God, Ooh, if I ever seen you in a fight with your long dress on and high heel shoes and sanctified self, my God, UFC don't have nothing on you. Come on, WWF, come on now. They have nothing on you. Look at somebody say, stay full. Uh-huh. Some of you, in order to deal with the issues in your marriage, I'm here to tell you, you're going to have to be full of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Some of you, the way your kids are acting, come on now. Oh, that knucklehead, my God, I don't care. You, he had three or four or five tutors. And he's still getting bad grades. And it's not because he's slow, because you took him to take the test, the LD test, and they said, my God, he don't have LD. Matter of fact, he's a genius. He just have behavior problems, my God. He's uncontrollable, and then his father not around to keep him in check. Because mm -hmm, a, a father have a way, my God, he had, oh boy, sit down. See, you know, the, the mama, you know, sit down, Johnny, sit down, you know. He ain't going to sit down. But, but a daddy say, now boy, you better sit down. Mm -hmm. You see that arm you got? I'll break it. Mm -hmm. But see, the daddy not around to be the disciplinary, and he just acting buck wild crazy. And in order for you to deal with that child until they get grown and gone, you're going to have to be full. Ooh, my. The situation on your job. Oh, they working you like you the CEO. Come on. But they pin you. My God. Ooh. They pin you like you lower than the secretary. You talking about the dogs eat the crumbs. My God, you eating some crumbs. My, you look at your paycheck. My God, what am I going to do with these crumbs? But in order to, to, to make it through your job and not mess up, because at least you got a job. I know you making ends meet. But some people not even making ends meet. At least you got a job. And if you want to keep your job, you need to be full of the Holy Ghost because when they decide to fire somebody and you've been acting up, you the one that's going to get fired. See, and see the, 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 the devil, the way the devil is attacking you. Oh my God, some of you, the devil is really attacking you. Mm -hmm. The way the devil is attacking you, you need to stay full of the Holy Ghost. If you don't stay full, that enemy is going to get inside of you. Mm -hmm. Some stuff in, in order to go through, in order to go through stuff, some stuff you're going to have to go through in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, be filled with the spirit. When the devil comes because he's coming. And the Bible said he coming for you like a roaring lion. The devil is coming. And when the devil come, you don't want your spiritual tank to be on E. 
oh, when your problems come, saints, hear me, hear me, because your problems are coming. They can come after church. They could come when you go home. You can be on your way home. And, you know, because the city of Chicago didn't, didn't plow really good and put enough salt down, you might slide into the ditch. Your problem might come while you're on your way home and stuck in a ditch. Ooh, you need to be full of the Holy. You don't want to be on E when your problems come. Mm -hmm. You don't want your praise tank to be on E. Mm -hmm. You don't want your faith to be on E when that situation comes. You don't want your joy and your peace to be on E. My God, you want to be on 10 because you're going to need the 1, the 2, the 3, the 4, the 5. You're going to need all of them to make it through what you're going through. You don't want to be on E. Mm -hmm. Never, ever allow yourself to become empty. Saints, never allow yourself to become empty because you're in a dangerous position. You're in danger of backsliding if you allow yourself to become empty. You're in danger of giving up if you allow yourself to become empty. You're, you're in danger of making the wrong decisions. You're in danger of going to hell. Mm -hmm. And my God, I'm looking for Jesus to come, y'all. And I'm making sure that my life is in order because when he snatched the sky, I don't want to be down there because I love to have fun. I love to smile and I love to give God praise. And because I like doing that, I made up in my mind, hell is not the place for me. Stand to your feet. I want to conclude with this. So I mentioned about being full of the Holy Ghost. I talked about how do you know you're full of the Holy Ghost. But now I want to tell you, how do you be filled with the Spirit of God? Somebody say, how do I be filled? How can I get full of the Spirit? I want to show something to you while you're standing. I want to show something to you. Ephesians 5 and 19 tells you how. He says, speaking to yourself, speaking to yourself, speaking, speaking things into yourself, speaking. You know, the devil speaks stuff into you. He speaks words of negativity, depression, anxiety, frustration. So the Bible says you need to speak things to yourself. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, the Bible tells you if you want to be full of the Holy Ghost, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. Giving thanks always. It's the scripture that says always be rejoicing. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Giving thanks always to the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, you get full off of what you feed on. If you feed yourself that negativity and if you feed yourself those negative thoughts, you're going to get full. But it won't be full of the Holy Ghost. That's why you have to be careful of what you watch on TV. You wonder why you, 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 you're struggling with that spirit of lust. Because you're watching that mess all the time. You wonder why you're struggling with your addiction. Because you keep on watching intervention and they choose not to go. Some of y'all don't watch TV, y'all didn't catch that one. You get full off of what you feed on. So what he's saying is, what the scripture is saying is feed yourself praise until you get full. Feed yourself the word because you get full. And the more you eat, y'all know the more you eat. Come on, y'all know about getting full. You know, some of us, you go to the restaurant, you go to McDonald's. You don't, you, come on. You got to eat until you get full. So you know about getting full. So what he's saying is read your word. Meditate on God's word until you get full. It's saying give God praise. Listen, listen. It's saying praise God. That's why you're struggling like you're struggling. You can't seem to get it right. You can't seem to get it right. Why? Because you're not full. You're not keeping yourself full. 
But it's saying to be full of Holy Ghost. It's saying praise. That's how you get full. You worship and praise God. Somebody say you praise God until you get full. Mm -hmm. See, see, we ask the Lord, fill us again. That's an error. Listen to me. Fill me again, Lord. Fill me again, right? We say that all the time. But according to this scripture, he telling you to fill yourself. Mm -hmm. Fill yourself up. I've given you all the tools you need, and you asking me to fill you again. My God, if you want to be full, then get on your knees and pray. If you want to be full, then go to church. If you want to be full, read, read your Bible, turn on some good gospel music. Come on now, and listen to that music until it goes bubbling over in your belly. That's, why, that, that's the purpose of church. I want you to understand this, because some of y'all sit around while service is going on. You don't get involved in the praise. The only person you hurting is yourself, and the only person you helping is the devil. The only situation you're hurting, you're hurting your situation when you don't get involved in praise God. You're hurting your situation when you come to church and look around. You're hurting your situation. So why, why, why do we have Sunday school at 10 a.m.? So you can get full. Why do we have prayer at 11.30 to 11.15? So you can get full. Why does the praise team come up at 11.15 to 12 o'clock? So you can get full. Why do the pastor get up here and preach to you the word of God from, a, from 11.30 to 12 or 12.05 or 12.05 right now? So you can get full. Why do we have an altar call so you can get full? By the time church is over, if you've been feeding like you need to be feeding, you will be so full, your cup. David said, my cup running over. It's your fault that you're not full. Then you find yourself repenting. Lord, forgive me. You find yourself slipping and falling. You find yourself being a bad husband. You find yourself being a bad parent. You find yourself being a bad wife. Why? Because you're not full. Oh, my God, if you got into the service, oh, you'll be so full, oh, we'll have to carry you to your car. Mm -hmm. You'll be so full of love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness. Oh, anybody, you want to be full? Let me see you raise your hand. So that means you're going to feed yourself. That means, oh, you're going to be on time and ready. Oh, whatever the pastor has to preach, I don't care if he preach on Genesis 1 and that's it. I, I'm a feed off of that. I don't care if they don't sing my favorite song. Oh, I'm ready. Anybody been ready to eat before? You were so hungry, the first, come on, you was fasting, and the first fast food restaurant you passed. You, you wanted some white castles, but you passed Burger King. You, oh, you pulled in. But some of you, you act like I did when I was a child. You, you act like I did. My daddy would get some vegetables, get some peas, put it on my plate, slide it in front of me. And you say, you eat that. I say, I ain't going to eat. I don't want to eat that. I ain't going to eat that. Then I thought it was funny because when he turned his head, I'll dump it in the garbage. Uh-huh. Some of you like that. You're not eating. There's enough food in here for this whole community. Come on. And then some. Come on. Some of y'all be like, man, oh, we have some church. Some of y'all been looking around. I was bored. I don't know what you're talking about. We ain't had no church. Because you didn't eat. Oh, y'all know the spirit of God is here. All you have to do is feed into the spirit of God. So I want us to take some time to feed our spirits. You know, it's not a sin to watch TV, but sometimes you can watch too much TV. It's not a sin to get on Facebook, but sometimes you could be on too long. You feeding your flesh. Now let's, let's just feed us. We don't have night service, y'all, so I mean. Feed your spirit just for a few moment, moments. Hallelujah. There is no one else like you. Hallelujah. There is no one else. You deserve the glory. Let's just worship for a little while. 
and the honor. Lord, we lift our holy hand and we worship you today. You deserve the glory. If you want a miracle, I want you to come now. If you want a miracle, I want you to come. If you want to be saved, I want you to come. We had a line of people that was sick. I believe every person got healed. For you are great. You do miracles. Just come, come, come. If you're being tormented by demons, I want you to come. Like you. There is no. I want you to line up. You are. Can I hear you? Saints, can I hear you? I can't hear nobody. So great. There is no. Why now? Just line up in a straight line. Line in straight, just straight. Shoulder to shoulder, shoulder to shoulder. There is no. All right. Let me be the choir director. You are. Can, the, 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 y'all, can y'all sing? There is no one else like you. Hallelujah. There is no like you. You are great. Come on, come on. You do miracles. Right here. There is face. Right here. Right here? Yep. Right. There is no one else. You deserve the glory. You believe God can do it. And the honor. Lord, we live your holy name and we were if you want to be saved if you have sin in your life you are not going to heaven you can say all the Hail Marys you want to but you cannot go to heaven with sin in your life the Bible says repent and be converted and your sins will be forgiven and he will fill you with the Holy Ghost hallelujah for you are great while we're worshiping, while we're praising, while we're worshiping, while we're praising, well, I'm going to pray for you. Those of you that are not going to worship, service is over for you. It's okay. Because I, like I don't like to hold spectators, you know, because you have things to do. But sometimes the Holy Ghost will keep you and he'll bless your soul. So we'll stay here with you for a little while. And if you have to tip out, I understand that. There is no one else. Come here, Evangelist Gardner. Come. You. Come on this side. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I hear the saints give God praise? There's no. of my oh forgive me lord i'm ready for my breakthrough i'm ready come on you do miracles do a miracle there is no one else like you i open up my heart to receive there is no one else like you come on you are great you do miracles lift your hand
You do miracles. Oh, there is no. You're great. Keep praising him, daughter. You've been delivered. God has set you free. Lift your hand. The presence of God. That's why you're shaking. That's okay. See, the presence of God is here. You've just been delivered. You've been delivered. That's what the tears are for. Now, I'm not even speaking in tongues, but people are getting touched by the power. That's it, daughter. You can open up and praise them. Open up and pray. That's it, daughter. Oh, my. Hey, shot. Woo. Yes. Oh, yes. There is no. That's the power of Jesus Christ. Oh, there is no one else. Oh. be here for a while so I'm letting you know when you're ready you can go evangelist In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You are great. You do me. Come.
All right, in the mighty name of Jesus, be healed, be delivered, be set free, in Jesus' name. You can go back to your seat. Be set free, be healed, be delivered, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. There is no one else. There is no one else. You do miracles. I love Jesus so much. I know we have to go. But I love Jesus. Oh, how I love him. If you love Jesus, just wave your hand. Just wave it. Oh, you are great. Oh. You do me. Y'all not saying nothing. There is no one else like you. Woo. Where is that? You are great. Come on. You do me. I love him. There is no one else. Okay. Evangelist. Pray for Sister Perkins when you finish. All right, we're about ready to go. Let's just worship for a little while. Then you can go home and you can eat. You can do whatever you want to do. There is no. You are great. Thank you, Jesus. I am healed. There is no one else like you.